All right, so once you're on justin.tv, you want to click on video game, other, and you already downloaded Flash Media Encoder, so you don't need to download that again. Click on config file and make sure you uh, save it somewhere you can find it because you're about to use it. So once you download the config file, you open up Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder and you do open profile and you select that file you just downloaded and press open. And once you do that, it's actually really easy. It automatically fills in all the information for justin.tv. So once you set up all your settings, you just press start and it will automatically start streaming to your, your web page. So a lot of people probably get confused with this. They see uh, all these options and go live and it just can get really confusing um, and it's they don't really show you exactly what you're supposed to be doing with it but all you have to do is open the profile and it will automatically fill in all this information you don't even have to be logged into justin.tv as soon as you press start broadcast right here it will automatically start broadcasting to your website and um, and once you press stop it will stop so it's really easy I really like how they just allowed you to load up your profiles like this um, it makes it real simple to actually broadcast the tricky part is what I'm about to uh, explain is trying to get the right settings so we already downloaded VH screen cap and that's going to be the device we're using for this. Make sure you have video checked, audio checked, and if you're trying to stream online, have stream to Flash Media Server checked. Now there's two formats you can use. There's H.264 and VP6. From my understanding, H.264 is kind of the way to go, but to be honest, I haven't used VP6, so I don't have a very... Uh, direct, uh, I don't have the experience necessary to say what's better, but from my understanding H.264 is the preferred way. Um, although I am recording this video in VP6 right here because for some reason um, my uh, H.264 videos weren't allowing me to watch them. It streams fine, but for some reason uh, I wasn't able to watch the videos. So, so right now I'm recording in VP6, but I would recommend H.264 for streaming, from my understanding. Um, there's some advanced settings here, and you're going to want to use main profile unless your computer's having real uh, trouble to uh, do this. And then you can switch it to baseline, which uses a little bit uh, less CPU power. Uh, the level you don't have to worry about too much. Um, just make sure it's not too low. 3.1 seems to be fine. And the keyframe frequency, you want it to be one second ideally, although you could uh, make it higher if you uh, want to have less stress on your CPU. So that's that. And then the frame rate. This seems to be, uh, in my opinion, there's kind of a misconception about the frame rate. Everyone thinks you have to have 60 frames per second and or 30 frames per second or else your video will just look like crap but honestly I found that 15 frames per second that's what I'm recording in right now it looks pretty smooth it's not too bad uh, you don't really notice a lack of frames to be honest or at least I don't um, I'm sure I would notice it in like a game if I was getting 15 frames instead of 60 but for streaming, it seems to actually work pretty well. And one thing you need to remember is the higher your frame rate uh, settings are, the more work your uh, processor is going to have to do. So if I was to raise my frame rate from 15 to 30, that would actually double the amount of work that my processor would have to do to encode. So if you're having troubles with uh, CPU performance or your computer's lagging or your game plays a little bit choppy or whatever when you're trying to stream the first thing you're gonna want to do is lower your frame rate I um, actually tried streaming with a higher frame rate at first and uh, 
it was really kind of slowing down my gameplay, and I found that if I lowered it to 15 frames per second, um, it seems like I can play all my games just fine with no lag whatsoever. And, um, you know, if I had a really good processor, I might consider raising my frame rate to maybe 20 or 30, but then again, maybe not. I mean, there's a lot of variables to consider when it comes to frame rate, and the main one is just it makes it a lot easier for your processor, and that's always a good thing. Another thing is the higher your frame rate, you're also going to have to raise your bit rate, and um, yeah, you don't want your bit rate to be too high. Um, now we have the input size, which is 1920 by 1080, which is just the resolution of my monitor. So select the resolution of your monitor and fill it in there. And you want to maintain aspect ratio just so that nothing gets uh, distorted or all wonkified. But then you have the bit rate. And this is kind of the most difficult thing to, um, to choose. I mean, what do you do? Do you want to have a really low bit rate so pretty much anyone can watch your, your stream without getting any lag? Yeah, that sounds good. But if you want to have a certain level of visual quality your bitrate is going to need to be increased. So I think you should try to keep it as low as possible um, until you're... Uh, you need to satisfy your visual needs first. You need to make sure the video looks good to you and what's the minimum bitrate that you can achieve your desired results. So I used to be streaming in about a thousand kilobytes per second and I noticed that my gameplay my videos just looked kind of choppy um, there's it just looked really bad it, like when units were moving it would be kind of blurry um, it just looked like a really crappy stream basically and I found that uh, by raising the bitrate it had a huge direct uh, impact on the quality of my videos so Basically, you want to keep it as low as you can while still having the quality that you want. Um, it's kind of hard to decide, but I actually found a website that is very helpful, and I will actually uh, try to provide a link to it in my uh, uh, description. But basically, this is a bitrate calculator. So this is exactly what you're going to want to uh, consider when you're trying to decide what bitrate you're going to use. So for me, I'm using a 16 to 9 ratio. I'm using um, 960 by 540 output size. So you enter that in there. Oops. I can't see my keyboard. All right, 960 by 540 output size. We're using a 15 frame rate. If you're streaming games, you're going to probably want to have fast motion so it's not blurry. And we're using the H.264 codec. So these settings are coming out to 2200 video uh, kilobytes per second. And then I'm using MP3 stereo 44.1 uh, hertz with, uh, they're suggesting medium quality is 160. So overall, if I'm going to stream with these settings and I want fast motion, they're saying that I need to, or their uh, estimation is 2,400 kilobytes per second. And that's why we went to speedtest.net earlier. As you can uh, remember, my upload rate was about 4 megabytes per second, or that's 4,000 kilobytes per second. So you need to use your speedtest.net upload uh, speed results to make sure that you have enough upload capacity to even do this. If my upload capacity was, or my upload speed was 2 megabytes per second, I wouldn't be able to upload at this speed. They actually recommend your connection speed to be almost 3,000 kilobytes per second. So that's pretty high and here's another thing if you were to double the frame rate to uh, 30 frames per second all there's all of a sudden they're uh, saying I need over 5,000 kilobytes per second which that is just ridiculous so that's another reason to keep your frame rate low is that 
you will have um, a lower bit rate for the same uh, video quality. So I will try to provide a link to this so that you can put in your own personal stats and get an estimation for your bit rate. That's actually really helpful. Um, but yeah, once you do that, so it was suggesting for me um, a 2400 kilobyte per second upload rate or bit rate. And right now I'm using a 2300 uh, kilobyte per second. So that will give you a pretty good idea. This website's really helpful. I suggest you use that if you have no idea what to set your bitrate to. Uh, it'll probably save you a lot of time with your uh, troubleshooting and just trial and error. But basically, yeah, so I have it set to 2200 kilobytes per second. And the output size is uh, half of my input size. So my input size is 1920 by 1080. Half of that, my output size is 960 by 540. Um, technically, you can do pretty much whatever output size you want, but I've heard that it looks a lot better if you uh, like directly divide it by two or something. Just have it a nice number that uh, is dividable by your input size so that everything is easier. Um, and then you have audio, and you're going to want to use stereo mix and how you, you do this. Hopefully you have stereo mix. Some sound cards don't even have stereo mix, but you go to system sounds and um, here's stereo mix. So hopefully you have that. If you don't, it's going to be kind of a, you're going to have more trouble to set this up and I don't really want to go into that. Um, it's possible you can download a new uh, sound card driver that will include stereo mix. Um, that's probably where you want to start if you can't find it. But basically, yeah, you use Stereo Mix. I use MP3 format because it's just a, maybe that's the only format I have actually. Um, stereo, that's just um, using both speakers um, independently, which uh, sounds a lot better. And then you want 4400 uh, sample rate. And I find that 128 kilobytes per second for the audio is more than enough to sound really good and you're going to want to probably set your volume all the way up. Now if you're using a microphone um, you can actually have that feed directly into your stereo mix. All you do is you go into your microphone properties and you click listen to this device and when you do that everything you say will um, go through your speakers so it goes into your stereo mix. So you can have your music, your game uh, coming through your stereo mix. And then if you cl click uh, listen to this device, you'll also have your microphone. So that's really good to know. Um, one thing to make note of is uh, you're probably going to want to use headphones when you are have listened to this device um, ch uh, checked. Because if you don't, you might get insane amounts of feedback and... Uh, yeah, nobody likes that. So you're probably going to want to use headphones and just make sure that you have uh, listen to this device checked on your microphone. And um, so yeah, we've gone through all these settings. Um, and you want to have stream to flash media clicked. And um, so yeah, you just load your profile, have uh, stream to flash media server checked and set all your settings um, as good as you can. You're probably going to want to start slow, you know, you can start with a really low bit rate, just test it out for a few minutes, watch your stream, and then uh, keep upping it and uh, keep messing around with your settings until you get something you're really happy with. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So basically what you would do now is, uh, if I was trying to stream, I would have uh, this checked and I would press start stream and it would automatically uh, start playing a video on my uh, website. So that's how you stream video on justin.tv with a Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. And uh, one last little basic tip is that you're going to want to try to uh, minimize your background applications and uh, just make it easier for your computer. One thing you can do is use uh, Windows Basic. If you right click and go personalize, 
you can use Windows Basic Theme instead of Windows Arrow Theme, and that will just use a lot less uh, system resources, which basically you're going to want to have um, all your system resources available because streaming can be uh, very intensive, especially once you start up a game. Um, one thing you can do to uh, try to shut down background programs is you type msconfig in your search bar, click on it, and then click on startup, and go through all your startup programs and just try to make sure that you only have ones that you really need um, checked. Otherwise, you know, you'd have 20 unnecessary programs in the background at all times, which is no good. And uh, the last thing you need to know is uh, most games, um, you need to stream them in windowed mode. I don't know why this is, but basically, yeah, stream your games in windowed mode um, because the majority of games don't work if you stream them uh, in full screen. And uh, I think that's about it. So hopefully everyone uh, could learn something from this. And uh, yeah, everyone should uh, try out their own stream. It's, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.